One of my big problems with the religious victory, kind of at the end, when you know you're going to win the game, kind of like this scenario here, it's just so tedious because I'm just throwing missionaries and apostles everywhere waiting for us to win the game. So I skipped over the last like 30 turns so that I could finally win this game and show off the conclusion to the series. But yeah, I mean, I think that everything that I thought about Arabia was true. Uh, Arabia is a fantastic sieve. We're going to win around turn 305. Last Prophet is an amazing ability, but the thing about this sieve is it's not the Last Prophet that makes Arabia so good. It's the surrounding bonuses that get them from, you know, establishing that late game religion to boosting them past the rest of the of the world because like for instance we have we were able to purchase our mosques for zero faith like the entire game we we're just purchasing moths for mosques for moths. Yeah, we're purchasing little bugs to fly around at lights. No, we are purchasing mosques for like zero faith, and those buildings were also enhanced uh, with science, faith, and culture for uh, the output of our Arabian cities. Let's see here. What else did we get? We got plus one science for each foreign city following Arabia's religion, and we were catching up in science towards the end of the game. This is a small bonus that, again, a lot of this stuff was not talked about in the first look breakdown of Arabia, and it makes them just even better. The Mamluk was a fantastic unique unit, incredible in the sense that it just is able to continue to heal. I didn't even wasn't even ever concerned about healing the Mamluks ever or Mamluks. And then uh, and this was this is great. This is a it's a science building that also offers more science and faith on top of it. So I think we're getting five science out of this building and like four faith. So by the end of this game, I mean, I'm generating, you know, 250 science easily per turn. So it, was, it wasn't it was even really a question. Um, compared to the rest of the world, yeah, 250, 132, 153. Uh, hey, yo, but Gandhi does get naturally some pretty big bonuses, but Gandhi was doing pretty pretty good. I'm, I'm very lucky, actually, that Gandhi was my neighbor because, uh, yeah, he, he ended up not being a huge uh, issue for me when achieving my religious victory. And then, yeah, nobody else was even close. So just to kind of confirm a um, couple things. Yeah, so, geez, the religious victory is super tedious at the end here. But, um, you know, I, I will admit I should have used more missionaries. I'm not sure that would have really made a difference at all. But I was I was just purchasing apostles at the end because I was loving the promotion that I was getting from those apostles. So I think it was somewhat of an okay strategy. But, uh, yeah, over the break, I've just been pumping out missionaries and sending them slowly but surely converting over Russia, which was kind of the problem, was one of the big problems. Um, and here's the thing. You only need to establish your religion in 50% of the cities, not the population of the cities. So ignoring some of the big population centers like St. Petersburg and like, like whatever, however you pronounce this one, really helped me. I was trying for the city really hard just to see if I could get it, and it was just taking forever. Uh, so I went after their smaller cities, 8 population, 7 population, and 9 from Novgorod. Then Tula, 4 population, and then right here, another 4 population city. So that really made it a lot easier. And one strategy I'd like to try out, and this is a little bit gamey, I didn't want to do it because I know people would be upset with, at me, but I, I was really close to if it was going to take this long. I was going to settle a city, two cities actually, it, well, whoever I needed to, Russia, and, and give them to Russia or China. And then just boom, I mean, there's we've got like a huge, huge stronghold of Islam in this continent, so we would have spread it super easily. Uh, you know, converting over a city with one population, it takes one spread. That's it. Boom. And, and again, so there, there, it's a little bit gamey, as I said. You, we could, I could probably play on Deity here. If I played on Deity, I think I could, and I did that strategy, I probably could have won this game by maybe 270. 270, maybe. So um, so that's definitely something I you know might want to try out. But yeah, I, I don't know why I was going for these huge population centers. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess... I guess you, you hold on to some of the big centers a little bit easier, like a 20 population city like Paris, you hold on to it with, uh, you know, it doesn't really ever go away. I had to continue to convert these guys over because they would convert to Islam, and then as you can see, Protestantism and Catholicism are on the, on the rise. Actually, I think this is Eastern Orthodox. It, does, it doesn't matter. Uh, but point is, yeah, this was the big city. As soon as I grabbed this guy right here, it was over. Um, that was so key to this victory. I don't know if I would be doing as well government where's my little i don't want any of this stuff yeah so the, it was if it wasn't for this victory vic, uh, this city i would not have won this early so this was so 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 crucial i cannot stress that enough how amazing it was taking that city anyways okay so uh china was the last holdup they have 
four cities. I couldn't find the fourth one, and I was going to. I was trying with this cavalry unit. I was like, where the heck is this fourth city? He was actually going to settle something, which could have been a pretty big problem. But if I would have found his fourth city, more than likely he found his own island, and it probably only had like four or five population. Again, it would have been a lot easier than uh, going after some of his bigger population centers. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to spread once there, and uh, I've got another little guy right here with two extra spreads. We might have to wait one more turn. Again, I don't think I'm going to have to use this strategy, but uh, yeah, for the most part, everything worked out pretty well. If China were to settle the city like right now, then we would stop. We would we would not win this game. But um, well, it's, it's not that we wouldn't. It would just take us a few extra turns. I was really hoping too. I was really confident that I was going to get that uh, that victory at turn 300. I wish it was, there needs to be like a policy or something that you can enact that can make this, you know, snowball a little bit faster in the late game. If you, if you, if it seems like, you know, if there's a sieve that has like 50 cities converted or whatever, uh, 30 or 40 cities converted, there should be a policy that makes it a little bit easier just to, you know, get the rest of them. Okay, here we go. I haven't seen this yet. What's going on? Stonehenge. And stars. And... Sean Bean is talking, but I can't, I can't, I can't hear him. Why is he so, he's really quiet right now. Hmm. This is nice. Oh, okay, cool. Well, it was nice. It was nice. I need to, I need to get all those, I need to look at all those victory screens one day. Um, let me see if they've changed this at all. Have they changed this since... Jeez, it's, I'm still getting so such slow, slow score. Dang, Drew, you sucking. You really sucking. Is it a victory theme? No. Oh, no, that's just their theme. I was going to say, there's no way they had. Uh, they also made victory themes for every single um, sieve. That would have been, been too much. So, wait a second. There is no movie playba playback. Oh, that needs to change. Well, I think it's it's fairly it's fairly fair to, fairly fair. It's it's probably it's very probable that we're gonna see a lot of expansions to Civilization VI. It's just such a good base game here that on top you know in introducing expansions is just gonna pull this Civilization game ahead of every single other one. I think that's very clear to uh, I think a lot of the community. But yeah, I, ho I wish that they would have included like a playback mode to see you know all the cities. That were settled throughout the world but uh anyways guys yeah hope you, hopefully you guys enjoyed this series i know that i certainly did you know i want to look at actually one thing yeah faith per turn if I, my faith per turn actually started to kind of suck yeah india started to jet pulse jet past me yeah arabia india and spain are among i think the most powerful religious civs so far spain especially when it comes to like a domination strategy arabia isn't really geared for too much war, even though the Mamluks are pretty great. Um, they they're just really focused on the strategy that I did, where you just you just boom, you, you establish that late profit, and you just jet past everybody. I mean, look how low I was. Boom, boom, boom. I got into that war um, with the Aztecs. I think around this time period, and what, right when we pieced out, it was just an explosion because I got all my science buildings out, I got all my holy holy districts out, I got up my mosques. It was great. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the series. I certainly did. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.